Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. We've got a new attachment we're gonna install on the side-by-side -side today, but before we get to that, let's go outside and take a quick peek at Winter Storm Elliot, or the Bomb Cyclone, as they are calling it. Here we go. So it is negative two out right now, and we've got 60 mile an hour wind gusts. It is nasty. Good news is though, it should make for some pretty good ice on the pond. Boy, that just takes your breath away. Yep, my beard's frozen. Woo! So yeah, good day to be in here working in the shop next to the wood stove where it is currently 64 degrees. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this unboxed and see what's inside. There, now you can see what it is. It's a snowblower. So this is a Rami Snowblower 120 designed for ATVs and side-by-sides. Bob Nelson from Metza Machines sent us this to try out here on the channel. If you notice, all of the Yappa machines that Bob sells are made in Finland, and these Rami products are also made in Finland. Um, so the opening on this of the housing for what it'll collect snow is 44 inches wide, but it also comes with some wings that extend out diagonally to expand the path that the snowblower will collect and make sure that it gets it out past your tires so you're not running over snow that hasn't been collected yet. All right, so we got everything unboxed and the snowblower on dollies. And this is one thing I highly recommend for any kind of attachments for your side-by-side -side, four-wheeler tractor, anything that you have to line up to the machine before you attach it. It's a lot more difficult to maneuver the machine to the attachment than it is the attachment to the machine. But if your attachment is on the ground, now you're talking about lifting it and trying to wiggle it in place. When it's on dollies, it's a lot easier just to slide it right up and then you can kind of real easily finesse it right into place where it needs to go. And here's the rest of what comes in the kit. So we have our lock and hook mounting, which I do believe is an extra, but it's gonna make hooking this machine up take less than 60 seconds and unhooking it. So if we wanna snow blow and then go use it for something else, we'll be able to connect and, and disconnect very quickly. Here's those wings we were talking about. And then you have your winch mounting plate, uh, and it also comes with a power lift strap here from Colpin. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting this together. First thing we're gonna do is create our mounting post for our lock and hook set, which is very simple. All we're gonna be doing is building off of our existing Colpin snowplow frame. And if you look, we just have a bolt and a nut, and this feeds in through the mounting ears of the snowplow frame with that nut in place. And then once we get that screwed in, we'll add a lock nut to the other side. And then we add our lock nut to this side to hold everything nice and snug. And in case you were wondering, this is a 24 millimeter bolt and it is nice up and tight against the snowplow frame. So thank God for swivel heads. Nice and snug. So the next step is to get the lock and hook set mounted to the ATV winch frame. Just to bolt through a couple of washers and a lock nut. Now the idea here is this is going to hook over the post we just mounted. So if my finger is the post here, you'll get that lined up, flip this over, and then you've got a pin and that's literally all the longer it should take you to mount your snowblower to your ATV. Unhooking it would be just the opposite. Pull your pin, your lock and hook set drops, and your snowblower frame drops, and you're disconnected from your snowblower and ready to go do something else.
Next, we're going to get the uh, winch frame mounted and you can see this frame is slotted so it will accommodate a bunch of different size machines. So we're going to get this mounted to ours how it will fit. And now we got that side locked in. So now we can slide this back and forth so that it's centered in the machine and get all eight of these bolts tightened down. The next step is hooking up the other half of the winch frame and as you can see this is telescoping and you can set it to the uh, proper length that you need for your machine. You don't want it to be too close because otherwise when you go to lift and raise the machine you'll end up getting into your bumper and you don't want it too far away because then you're getting a lot of weight out there putting a lot of stress on your front suspension. So we're going to go ahead and set this temporarily right now and we'll adjust it later once we get the snowblower on and see how it acts in relation to the machine. But I think we're going to start with this position right here. In a rare circumstance it does come with an extra extension bar but Bob told me that about 95 percent of the installations they do don't end up using this so I'm going to end up keeping this for some practice welding. Now we're going to go ahead and remove these nuts and bolts. All right, I got an idea. Let's undo this and we'll go ahead and hook this up separately. There we go. So far, that was the hardest part. All right, next we're gonna work on attaching the extension wings and on the left side of the unit is the gearbox and in order to gain access to those bolt holes, we've gotta remove the gearbox. I believe the right side is a lot easier because you don't have the gearbox in the way. Here's a quick look at the gearbox before we install the wing. It is a belt driven unit. Here's a look at what the wing is going to look like. It's just going to mount right to the side there. And like I said, give us that extra uh, six, seven inches or so to collect additional snow. And if you look at the inside of the housing here, all the hardware is already installed. So we just need to remove those bolts, line up the holes and put the bolts back in. Now on the inside of this gearbox, some of the bolts we have to remove are kind of difficult to get to, but that is where a swivel head ratcheting wrench really comes in handy. I can go ahead and get in there, grab that. And now I can get these bolts out that otherwise, I'm not really sure how I'd get these out. All right, so we got all of the existing hardware out and we just need to line up our wing and start putting the bolts back in. So now all of our assembly on the snowblower is complete. The only thing we have left to do is we've got to route the wire for our chute controller inside the cab.
All right, so as you can see, some of the driveway is completely bare. Some of the driveway, we've got snow banks. So we're, this isn't gonna be like a huge test for this machine, but I do wanna try it out. And we have some snow banks that we need to uh, take care of, or some snow drifts, I should say. So, let's see, fuel is on, throttle is on. We'll go ahead and give it a prime. And we'll go ahead and turn the choke on. And then we'll go ahead and give it a pull. All right, so I was trying to get this thing to start, and uh, I know that most snow blowers have a key, and there is a spot for a key here, and I thought that this got shipped without a key, so I was struggling to get it started. I reached out to Bob, and he said, one thing that's really important to know is there is no key with this snow blower. Your key is the on-off switch here on the controller inside the cab. So if you go to order one of these and can't figure out how to get it started, that's why. You gotta have the on switch on the controller inside the cab. All right, so we got her pulled back in the garage here because it is too cold out to be troubleshooting outside. I mentioned it's zero degrees out right now. Look at the size of the rock we got caught up in there. So before we go for test number two, I think I want to adjust these skid shoes to get us a little bit higher up off the gravel. Obviously, it's very early in the season to be using the snowblower on the gravel driveway. The later we get, the more snowpack we'll get on the driveway, the less gravel we'll be shooting up with this thing. But yeah, early in the season, you drop your skid shoes down so you're half an inch to an inch up off the uh, driveway. And then towards the end of the season, you get, get that good hard snow pack. You can go ahead and uh, raise them up and get your blade down closer to the driveway. That's about all we're gonna clean up over here. Like I said, really not even worth snow blowing just yet, but I kind of want to test it out and work out the kinks. Uh, so if there are any, we can address them now before we get a foot of snow. Uh, I think right now we're gonna head over to Doug's and see if he needs any help with any big snow drifts over at his place.
up over that retaining wall like we're doing right now. So we just got back from Doug's house and pulled back in the garage and I am glad he had some deeper snow for us to test this thing out. Normally Doug's the kind of guy he's got his snow taken care of before it even falls but uh, I think he knew we wanted to try out the new blower and he saved it for us. But I'll tell you what these are the kind of days that you have to have a cab. Negative temperatures, 40 mile an hour wind gusts, you wouldn't last five minutes outside without some sort of protection from the elements. Obviously a day like today we were just kind of testing things out. A snow plow would have been much faster. But the beauty of a snow blower is as you progress through winter, you're not building up those snow banks on the driveway. Your driveway's not shrinking every time you plow. With a snow plow, eventually you start running out of places to put it. Anyway, it is Christmas Eve right now. You guys will see this video tomorrow morning, Christmas Day. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. If you can't see behind me, I think Anderson is going to be pretty excited tomorrow morning. If you guys enjoyed this one, give me a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.